Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, the Management and Leadership Distinction. This is Lecture A, Leaders and Followers. In this lesson, we'll be talking about the distinction between management and leadership. The objectives for this unit, the Management and Leadership Distinction, are to compare and contrast concepts of leadership and management. Describe the concept and importance of developing followership. Discuss challenges of leading in a hybrid HIT organization. Define and discuss the Project Management Institute's three types of organizations. Discuss the pros and cons of temporary leadership. The distinction between management and leadership has been debated in nearly every business school across the country for decades. In this lecture, we'll concentrate on some of the distinguishing characteristics between management and leadership. At first glance, someone would probably look at the two topics and not see a significant difference between them. Coping with complexity and coping with change are both tough to do. Things like effective decision-making, creating and nurturing good teams, and juggling tasks so that organizational objectives are met are always going to present challenges. But management and leadership tackle these challenges in different ways. Management deals with complexity and chaos on a daily basis, removing obstacles so that goals can be met. Without their consistency, an organization would fail. A good manager might ensure that an angry but powerful project stakeholder is addressed to prevent a public blow-up in a team meeting. Managers are also adept at eliminating unnecessary steps in the decision-making process. Although many people consider managers only followers of policy, the value of an effective frontline manager cannot be underestimated. They bring a consistent and methodical approach to problem-solving. Leadership, by contrast, deals more with coping with organizational change and defining the direction that an organization needs to take to remain competitive. Neither of these two tasks, however, can be accomplished if a leader is not good at getting the buy-in of people at the decision-making level. A leader is leading people with a lot at stake, and these people have to be convinced to take action. They need to have a clear understanding of the consequences of the actions they're being asked to take. What's more, they need to believe in these actions. If the leadership team is not on board with the planned direction, then decisions will be difficult to make. To illustrate the leadership distinction, consider this quote from John Cotter, a professor of organizational behavior at Harvard. A peacetime army can usually survive with good administration and management up and down the hierarchy, coupled with good leadership at the very top. A wartime army, however, needs competent leadership at all levels. No one yet has figured out how to manage people effectively into battle. They must be led. As healthcare IT specialists, we will all be in the position of having to manage and lead. And sometimes, it will truly feel like we are in the midst of a military battle, complete with separate camps, wins, losses, and casualties. An important concept to remember is that effective leadership requires alignment of resources and ideas. To reiterate the distinction between management and leadership, let's look at some examples. The first example involves differences in vision. Imagine that a manager views a situation at a cellular level with a microscope. Managers drill down into the component parts of a whole to understand where problems or bottlenecks or opportunities may exist, both within their own area of domain, like a nursing unit, or across a number of units within a hospital. A leader, by contrast, takes another visual device, a pair of binoculars, and looks far into the distance. 
What may be looming on the horizon that is not visible to the naked eye? How big is the threat? Or is it an opportunity? How do I inform my managers of the threat without them feeling overwhelmed or afraid? We can also look at the example of the President of the United States and the Cabinet members. The President is perceived as a vision setter across the globe and domestically. He or she is considered a leader. But the President relies on the Cabinet members or managers to manage the individual pieces of the leadership strategy. With the creation of the National Coordinator for Health IT position in 2004, the U.S. now has a federal entity to coordinate nationwide efforts for health information technology. The Office of the National Coordinator, or ONC, is the principal leadership entity surrounding adoption of electronic health records. It goes without saying that the ONC sets a vision for how the U.S. may advance health care through the use of IT. But vision alone is not enough. Someone has to do the work, and that's where managers in state and local organizations come into play. They must take the vision and make it a reality. In many instances in literature and modern pop culture, leaders are held to a superhuman status, able to leap a building in a single bound, saving small children on a train from going off of a cliff. You get the picture. Followers, by contrast, are seen as second in line, having less power. Followers are sheep that have to be led. While there are numerous books written about leadership, there are, by comparison, very few pieces of literature written about the importance of developing and nurturing followers. But it is crucially important that leaders do this, especially in the information age. The Internet has leveled the playing field on who has access to information and who can make knowledgeable decisions. In the past, prominent leaders were graduates of business schools and sat on boards where they were privy to information they could then use to make organizational decisions. Today, a lot of this information is now available to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And this means that leaders don't necessarily have all the answers anymore. They should not and cannot just expect to be followed. They need to invest more in their relationships with their followers. In an article titled The Leader-Follower Relationship, Practitioner Observations, Don Grayson and Ryan Speckhart offer another reason for developing a good followership. The number two person in charge is often the person whose relationship you should value the most. This is typically the person who acts in the leader's place when he or she is not available and is very often the gateway to the actual leader. You do not want in any way to marginalize or underestimate the relationship with the number two person. Grayson and Speckhart offer another reason to develop their followers. Leaders are often glorified, but many who are leaders would probably make better followers. Even the CEO of an organization reports to a board. A leader may have a vision for how things ought to be run in the company, but without a well-developed followership, there would be no realization of that innovative idea or vision. Leaders get their ideas from somewhere. And if we are leaders, we should encourage our followers to bring forward ideas. For example, if you are a network manager, your idea may never get past an internal departmental meeting. But if you share your idea with the leader of an organization, it may lead to the critical piece of information missing from the leader's vision. A follower's information on a good technical framework may make a visionary idea a reality. To bring the idea of leaders and followers home, let's revisit the Grayson and Speckhart article on leaders and followers. They maintain that there is a slight overlap in the relationship of leader and follower and that it can change over the course of a project. In the next few slides, we'll look at these changes 
in the context of a typical healthcare IT implementation. At the beginning of a project, sometimes called the planning stage, a leader may be executing strategy already set forth by a board of directors or a senior leadership committee. The leader, at this phase of the project, is often referred to as the project sponsor and is leading primarily from a document called the project charter, which spells out the activities that are within the scope of this particular project. The leader's visibility is crucial during this period of time because the followers need to understand that the project has the full support of the leadership of the organization. So, when the project starts, the leader should be a prominent figure in meetings and in announcing expectations and goals. Good followers, or executors of the leader's strategy, should ask questions and seek clarity on the goals and objectives. Remember, a manager or follower looks deep down into a problem and then asks, what does this mean to my particular area? In the middle of a project, there will be a higher degree of collaboration between the leader and followers. In project terminology, this phase might be called the execution phase, where the majority of the actual work is performed. While the leader or executive sponsor is ultimately responsible for promoting the goals of the project, it may be the followers who help make the transformation occur. Followers in this case might be a team of project managers who make sure that schedules are adhered to and that any obstacles that prevent a project's success are removed. Followers may actually be tasked with leading portions of the implementation project, depending on their expertise. In this way, intermittent leadership of the project shifts, but overall leadership of the project still rests with the executive sponsor. Finally, at the end of a project, the leader takes back the reins and may officially declare the project completed, with goals met and a new system in place. It's important for the leader in this portion of the project, often called the closing phase, to celebrate successes with all followers. After all, the leader could only be successful with a competent group of followers who understood and executed the goals of the project. This concludes Lecture A, The Management and Leadership Distinction. To summarize this lecture, let's review a couple of key points. Recognize that the line between leaders and followers and leaders and managers will blur occasionally. It may take a while to discern who has true or recognized leadership within an organization and who is merely a very effective and visionary manager. It is hoped that the roles would be well-defined before a project begins, but that isn't always the case. So be sure you are very clear about who is playing which role. A leader cannot be effective without competent managers and followers. This idea must be stressed. A manager may be seen as less powerful, but remember, you may get your best advice and counsel from the number two person in charge. Remember that during the course of a project, you may be put in the position of having to lead a project, even though someone else at the organization may have been named as project sponsor. The point is to exhibit leadership skills, but give deference to the organizational resource or executive sponsor whenever possible.